Karen is along with us this morning. Karen, what is going on? Good to have your company. Um, I was just calling. I've never done this before. I'm not one to just call into a radio station. But I wanted to share something that just happened in my car on the way to school while we were listening to the station. My 17-year-old son was just thumping through the radio stations trying to find something with music, you know. And so we caught the end of a song on his radio. And right after that... You guys went into a story about a young lady with a rare heart condition who just got engaged. Yes, and just had that heart transplant. Well, my son is 17 years old, and a year ago, he was diagnosed with that same rare heart condition. And we've never even heard, like, I've made some connections, like, through John Hopkins and stuff, but, like, just to hear an actual person's story, he didn't want to do the transplant but prior to being diagnosed, he was an athlete. And so when he heard about this young lady being able to be active again and have her life back, like his whole like face just changed and like his whole attitude, even if it was only for a few moments, he was like, I can have my life back. And he said, shoot, they can put me on the news too. And um, it was just a change for him. And it was really just the inspiration. So I just really wanted to share that. What that mean to you? Just to see that look on his face of hope. Like, he told me just a couple of weeks ago, he's like, I don't want to do a heart transplant. And I said, well, why not? And he said, well, I'm just tired. I'm tired of being in the hospital. I'm tired of recovering from surgery. Um, he just had emergency surgery in December to have a defibrillator implanted um, after a heart attack that nearly took his life. And so for that, um, they had to do a heart surgery. It was different from traditional, so it was a very extensive surgery. He ended up um, spending 17 days total in the hospital in December because he's just over it. He's just tired of surgery in hospital. So it just meant a lot. To, like I can't explain really how it made me feel. It just made me feel so relieved and hopeful to see that look on his face like he's feeling better about it like he is going to accept it and go through with the surgery and not not you know what i mean <laughs> it's hard to put in the word yeah he's not fearful anymore god just gave him a glimmer of hope which is so cool yes exactly it was just like you know we've not even been able to speak like directly with someone else who has this condition it's so rare yeah. like there's no one else to hear it like and just to hear it like not only to hear it but to hear it on the radio something that like a lot of people are hearing about it it's just like a breath of fresh air to know like we're not alone and he's not alone and just to see that like hope on his face like and to hear somebody else say you know I can get back to life and be active again. Sometimes God just places things right in front of you when you need to hear them, you know? Rob and Liz. His morning crew. So the whole family's together. I think they're going to eat. I can't figure out what they're getting ready to do, but it looks like they're getting ready to go to eat. And so one of the sons of Donald, that's his name, I believe, looked at him and said, uh, Grandpa, what kind of car is that? Because it's an old car. He looks at it and goes, oh, that's a 1970 <laughs> Duster. That's the way Grandpa sounds. Yeah. I love that. 1970 <laughs> Duster. So they're talking about it. Well, tell me about the car, Grandpa. He's telling them about the car. And then the little granddaughter hands them, our Grandpa, a box. Hmm. Says, here's, oh, by the way, it's your birthday. Here's He opens up the box, and it's the keys to the 1970 Duster. This must have been just the car he always wanted, right? 40 plus years he worked to the bone to provide for his family. And they're so grateful for that, that they got him a car. And this dream car of a 1970 Duster. This looks like something out of the movies, man. Yeah, it's just so amazing. You're showing a picture and it it is. I mean, it's shined up. It's not like they said, okay, so you got to restore this. It looks like maybe they got somebody to restore it. I mean, it's not. Nice. It's so good. He sat in it. <sighs> I think he'd get ready to start it up. 
Take off, drive, forget about dinner. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Sounds like Liz is not a fan of Twitter. It can get a little like, like makes my stomach hurt. Elon Musk is on Twitter and he sent out a very important tweet Mm -hmm. the other day. And he said, the Starlink service is now active in Ukraine. More terminals are en route. And what that is about is that he put up into space a way that the the Ukrainians can use the internet because it's been blocked. Mm. It's been blocked. It's been shut off. And so he put these devices up in space and he's giving them certain pieces of equipment. Mm. So now in Ukraine, they can access the internet because they've been cut off from the world. So that means now they can communicate with maybe family members that yeah. flee the country. And uh, that that's huge. When he has the resource and somebody just brings it to his attention and he says, yeah, I can do something about that. That's that's incredible. Yeah. And then the the, the vice prime minister asked, or just uh, said thank you on Twitter back to Elon Musk. Well, I mean, it's not like they can make phone calls to each other. So no. that is where social media can be amazing when you can use it to make contact when you can reach out to other people but you know in the ukraine they were not able to oh, do that you're before. shut off like yeah. that they couldn't do anything but now it's up and going so spacex came to the rescue so to say elon musk put his money right where you know he his should heart is, really. to, to help people like that so and now digitally, when when in Ukraine they can start getting the devices that connect up to the the SpaceX stuff Satellite, that's in yeah. space, so they can connect to the internet. A lot more people are going to be able to connect with loved ones or see the news and see what's going on because now they're, they're like blind; they can't see anything. Yeah. On what's happening. This is huge. What he's done. Robin Liz, his morning crew. So if there's a movie that's in English, we go and watch this movie. You know, when it goes overseas, when it goes to another country, they have to kind of overdub uh, the 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 um, <laughs> the story. Yeah. Uh, they have to have voice actors that put it in like Spanish or in Chinese or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So Paddington the Bear. Did you ever see that movie? Kids nope. movie. No, Kids movie. I'm aware of it, but I've never seen okay. it. Okay. I love Paddington. Um, when it went to Ukraine. They had to have a voice actor that said the lines. Do you know who that voice actor was? I have no idea. Volodymyr Zelensky, president of Ukraine. No. He used to be an actor and a comedian. And so uh, just a couple of years ago, like four years ago, I guess it was, he made this big announcement. He's like, I'm getting out of acting and comedy because I want to run for political office. I want to, you know, run the country. And he won by a landslide. And here he is. Yeah, and going through what he's going leading through. Leading that country right now, going, yeah. And seemingly exactly. running it very well. Well, there's a, there's a lot of people that are fighting right. so hard right now. Right. A lot and of he's prayer staying there. for Ukraine right now. Yeah. But just to know, like, his his background, uh, you know, a lot of things are coming out about Ukraine and about um, him as president and his life before and and kind of how his life has changed so dramatically just in the last four or five years to go from this voice actor for Paddington and now running this country and, and leading his people. The fight for their lives. Right. Right. Yeah. So mm. amazing. Lots amazing. of prayer for everybody in Ukraine. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Steve, just six years ago, was 18 years old. He was bored when he was 18. So he thought, eh, let me develop an app. And so he did. Wow, that's cool. He did. Put it up in the app store. Only an iPhone. So it's in the mm-hmm. uh, Apple app store. And then he just kind of forgot about it. I can see that. Mm-hmm. He was just bored. He was passing time. It was a word puzzle. He called it Wordle. Oh. Nothing to do with the Wordle that you know of today. They're not connected to each other at all. How did two the people Wordle, come up with that? <laughs> I know. The Wordle of today is web-based, and now the New York Times owns it. Mm-hmm. You know, Big money. It's harder than before. So people are looking for Wordle as an app. They don't know any better. I don't know any better. And so they search for it, and if they, on the iPhone, you know, in the App Store, they find Wordle. You don't know what it looks like if you've never played it. It's the same type of game. It's a word puzzle game. You get six tries to to kind of eat. He did this six years ago, this kid. So he's like, oh, wait a minute. 
I made an app called I did I did it's pretty much the same thing. So he checked in to see I wonder if anybody's downloaded it and they think that my app is the same thing as this one. And he goes <laughs> he goes online and sees oh there's millions of downloads of this thing. Millions? Yes. And he checked since last December 500,000 downloads in the span of 5 days. He's like Woo. And made a little money off of it. It's like number one in certain countries. 24 countries, this app is number one His now. His app. His app. What? That has, this Wordle has nothing to do with the other Wordle. It's crazy. So his Wordle now has 8 million downloads available only in the App Store. And he's like, wow, what am I going to do now? That I got some cash in here. He decided to give $50,000 to charity. So he's got more than fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and it's just been sitting there. Yeah, and he's twenty four now. He's twenty four years old, and he, and he's given fifty thousand to charity. Okay, I got to go do that math because that's wild. Isn't that crazy? But the the wildest part about it is two guys come up with virtually the same kind of game, and they call it the same thing. Yeah, how it's would you wild. know the difference? It is so wild. Huh? I wonder it's if very anyone similar has played this. I have not played Wordle. Yet. So you're wondering if they've done well. If it's, you've done both, it's number one in the App Store in 24 countries. Oh my goodness! Yeah, Rob and Liz, his morning crew. There is a big game this weekend. It's North Carolina Duke going head to head. It's uh, happening 6 p.m. is when ESPN is going to be on with this game. Some great basketball there. It really is, and it's a big game anyway. But this is also Mike Shashevsky's. Last game, Coach K. Last game at Cameron Indoor for Duke. Wow, it's gotta be so surreal. I could, I can't imagine when I get to the time where I say this is my last day here. You know, I wonder how emotional it's going to be for I'm, him. Yeah, he's got to be a wreck. I would be. I, yeah, and then going into such a big rivalry game. How the, okay? A lot of people want to go to this game. I've been to Cameron Indoor one time. Tickets are a little pricey, and this was a long time ago. Tickets for this game, uh, $3,690. But if you go to StubHub, which is one of those like third-party ticket kind of thing. I'm out the roof, I'm sure. $53.92. Come on, 53, really? $53, and that's like, I think that's the average price. So I don't even know. Like, is there a ticket that's fifteen? dollars Even if you're not into basketball, mm. this is exciting, you know, because right. it's his last... This is the last game. It's going to be the rivalry. And there's going to be so many people that are like, even if they don't like Duke, mm-hmm. want Duke to win. Yeah. Just for him. Just for him. You know? So he can go out on top. But I'm mean, like ESPN is going to be doing their uh, game day show, you know, before the game. So even people that don't get into Cameron Indoor, it's a smaller venue, if you ask me. There's going to be people just milling around everywhere. <laughs> right? Because they just want to say they were there when Coach K, you know, hung up the hoop, as it were. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. I know. Our hearts are going out to Ukraine, right along with you, praying for the whole situation. Russia, Ukraine, everybody involved. 500,000 people you probably saw in the news has fled the country. Children, men, women, mm-hmm. the elderly. Wow. And then you may have heard what Airbnb is doing, and they're trying to do everything that they can to get as many refugees in an Airbnb for free. I think it's like 100,000 they're able to do. They want to do everybody. You can't. It's really impossible. Mm -hmm. But they're doing their part, and they're doing 100,000 Ukraine refugees into Airbnbs. Yeah, they saw the news just like, you know, we're watching the news and see see the pictures, the videos, the families, the stories, and they said we got to do something. So 100,000. But it's not the first time they've done this. Um, they also put up like uh, Afghan refugees, about 21,000 over the years. And I mean, Airbnb hasn't been around for that long, mm-hmm. but they've grown exponentially, and so they've decided, hey, we can do 100,000 100, people that are going to have a roof over their head after they've had to, to leave everything behind, including loved ones. Yeah, it's something. I don't know if you know anybody that is there. Several people do. You know, Some people I know have, have loved ones and friends and people who have been doing ministry in Ukraine, but know this, we're right there with you, and we're praying big time. 
Rob and Liz, his morning crew. I don't know if you follow soccer. I mean, we've got the new team in Charlotte, right? Mm-hmm. The Charlotte F- uh, uh, FSA. Did I say that right? Probably not. It's our football club. <laughs> Anyway, so a lot more people are thinking more about soccer. And Sadai Mane, did I say that right? Sadio Mane, I Thank think. You. But I don't know if Thank I'm you. even right. You nailed it. Okay, thanks. The, you too. The guy makes $10 million Play off of playing soccer. soccer. That's pretty cool. He, he, has, he has a lot of money. But somebody noticed, like, in a post somewhere that his phone was cracked. And they're like, dude, buy yourself a new phone. You make so much money. His response will blow you away. It was incredible. He said, why would I want 10 Ferraris or diamond watches, two jet planes? He said, I used to starve. I used to work in the fields. I used to play barefoot. And I didn't go to school. And now I'm in a position where I can help people. He preferred to build the schools now and help the poor. And so what he does with his 10 mil is give it away. I'm sure he keeps enough to live. Oh, yeah. But he, he's not running right out because he can buy that new phone, put that new screen on. You know, he's he's making a difference with what he's been able to do, with his talent that God gave him. He's probably the guy that drives the Geo Metro. I hope so. Remember those know that. tiny yeah. little cars <laughs> you could pick up with your pinky? I don't know. He's awful tall. <laughs> he is a tall guy. He'd be crunched in it, but still. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. If I say Lee Greenwood, I wonder what comes to your mind automatically. For some people, they know it. And I'm proud to be an this guy. Lee Greenwood, who now has come out with his God Bless the USA Bible. This is pretty cool. Has all the resources that we need, you know, in our Bible. Of course, it's it's a King James Version. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with the version, it's the the and thou Bible. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, But also... They've added some things that, like the uh, Declaration of Independence, the words to the Pledge of Allegiance, there's the Bill of Rights. He also has uh, put in this Bible, handwritten lyrics to God Bless the USA. To the song. Yeah. That ought to be neat to see it in his own handwriting, right. you know? And I wonder, like, I would love to know the story behind that song, like how long it took him and what what was the inspiration. and and now he's tied it right to the Bible. Yeah. God bless the USA. Yeah, keep God in it. That's right. right. That's exactly what he's doing. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Shaw was hungry and she said, oh, I'm going to get some lunch and I'm kind of craving Chipotle. little DoorDash action yeah, going on. So I'm going to order. And so she goes on her app, her Chipotle app, and she orders whatever it is she wants for lunch. She hits submit and then... Maybe about 20 minutes later, she realizes, oh, my goodness, I moved, and I didn't change it in the Chipotle app. No, so okay. <laughs> it's got her old address in it, huh? Got her old address. <laughs> and if it were just across the street, you know, she could have called the driver and said, look, here's the address. No, no, she moved from Iowa to Maryland. And so... <laughs> okay, well, that's... It's quite the distance. <laughs> a little bit. So she she does get in touch. She texts the the driver and says, "You know what? There there's no way we I can make this happen. This is my bad. Have lunch on me." He says, "Oh, okay, thanks." And then a little while goes on, and she gets another text, and it says, "I just wanted to thank you again because today is my brother's birthday." And he was laid to rest not too far from where no. your former address is. And so I'm having lunch with my brother today oh. because of you. And you have no idea how much that means to me. I truly appreciate it. How God shows up in just the most unique ways. Like a happy accident. It's not an accident. Though. He uses a donkey <laughs> in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And a Chipotle app today. To touch our lives. It's wild. Who would have ever thought? I don't know if you have any kind of story like that. Share it if you would. But man, you know, had brother with my lunch. I had had lunch with my brother today. Sitting at the gravesite. Oh, man. Never been in that part of town. He had lunch. 
And it just so happened somebody moved in. <laughs> wow. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Fledge is along with us this morning at 800-447-7234. Hey, Fledge. I just heard the story about the lady calling in with her 17-year-old son in the heart. You know, I think you guys facilitate the same thing when people suddenly realize there's hope in Jesus and there's a change of heart. And it's like, what do you mean I can live my life again? And I want to thank you guys for doing what you do because sometimes people just need to hear that. Especially now, you know, Fledge, with the world going the way it is and stuff is surrounding us that just brings you down. Absolutely. I mean, imagine imagine someone just flipping the station or, or getting that a bit of encouragement from someone saying, you mean there's actually hope for me? Are you kidding? And and that, just that, that life change moment where Jesus gets to infiltrate their world and say, yes, we can do this and you can live. I mean, I think that's those stories about those transplants are exactly what Jesus intends for all of us. We all need a heart change, whether it's physically it's- or spiritually, we all need that. Absolutely. And, and hearing her voice and hearing her her joy to suddenly see a child go, oh, you mean there's actually a chance for me? I just, I mean, wow, flipping through the stations, I, you know, you guys know this because you do it every day. The li- lives are being changed. And I just want to thank you for what you guys do. It's, it's truly incredible.